Well, it's Pentecost Sunday, and I'm so glad and amped to be in the house of the Lord. And you can't see them, but we got some guests. I got some folk with me today in the house of the Lord. So you're going to hear some amens and some hallelujahs. We're gearing up. There, there you go. They're clapping. I don't know if you can hear it, but I love it. I have been preaching for over a year to a camera. And so it's so good today, Pentecost Sunday. I might just lose my mind today, start running, start skipping, start screaming. Hallelujah. But bless the name of the Lord. There is a word today on Pentecost Sunday. So I want you to grab your Bibles, your smartphones, however you read the word of God, and go with me to Ezekiel chapter 37. We're going to read verse 1 to 10 and also verse 14. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. And the word of the Lord says, The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley and it was full of bones. And then he caused me to pass by them all around and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And so I answered, O Lord God, you know. Again he said to me, prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied there was a noise. And suddenly a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. Mm. Also, he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the ruach, the breath, came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Verse 14, I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live. And I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord is blessed today and we surely honor God today. Listen, the onset of the 21st century has revealed a crisis of relevancy facing the Christian church. Church attendance is in sharp decline and the current pandemic has been a revealer. It's been a catalyst for people of faith to question and refocus their commitment. Some for the good and some mm, not so good. The popularity, the relevancy, and some would even dare to say that the power of the church has diminished. And so as Christians forge, as we make our way through crises of faith and pandemics and, 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 and relevancy and problematic predicaments, uh, through dilemmas and difficulties, listen, it is more apparent and it is more critical that the hand of the Lord be upon us. Can somebody say amen? It is more apparent, it is more critical that we have the hand of the Lord. Ezekiel says, the hand of the Lord was upon me. That means uh, the hand of the Lord taught me and led me and guided me. And it's a wonderful thing to have God's hands on your life. 
But not only does Ezekiel say that the hand of the Lord is upon me, but he also states, and carried me out into the spirit. Carried me out in the spirit. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Just touch yourself and say, carried in the spirit. Carried in the spirit. Listen, if we are going to ever see a manifestation of the power and the promises of God, we need to be carried out of the flesh realm and into the spirit realm. Uh, this is the reason why we're not seeing more glory and more power. This is the reason why we experience so little of the demonstration and the manifestation of the power of God. It's because God does his work through the Holy Spirit and the only way to participate with God is to get in the spirit, get in the spirit. Uh, he tells Zechariah that it's not by might. No, 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 no by power, no, 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 but by my spirit, says the Lord. And so I want you to understand that the operation of the Holy Spirit is not an emotional outburst. It's not an emotional response. No, the operation of the Holy Spirit is not a shake, a rattle, or a roll. It's not a jig. It's not a jump or a dance. No, the operation of the Holy Spirit and being in the spirit. I want you to catch this and if you're writing I want you to write this down being in the spirit is speaking of the realm or the dimension and the environment of God. Yes, that, that's, that's what it means to be in the spirit. Uh, to be in the spirit is not to shake uh, or to tremble, but to be in the spirit uh, is to be in the realm. Uh, it's to be in the God space. It's, in, it's, it's to be in the dimension of God. Uh, John the Revelator said uh, in the book of Revelations, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Day. John was in the God dimension and when you're in the God dimension that's when you see things that's when we experience the glory of God in the God dimension that's where we see visions in the God dimension that's where we receive instruction for the next assignment it's in the God dimension that's where we get a glimpse into the prophetic and things that are yet to be we've got to find ourselves in the God dimension in the environment of God that's what it means to be in the spirit and to see what John saw we've got to be where John was in the spirit. Somebody say in the spirit. Somebody say in the spirit. If you're in this church or you're in your home, just touch yourself and say carried in the spirit. Hallelujah. The Bible says Ezekiel was in the spirit. Spirit, uh, and that's where we belong. Uh, that's our environment. Uh, I'm not talking about dying uh, and going to heaven. Uh, I'm talking about living uh, in the realms uh, of the glory of God. Uh, Galatians tells us uh, this I say then. Paul says, uh, walk in the spirit uh, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Uh, he goes on to say that if we live uh, in the spirit, we should also walk by the spirit uh, i'm not talking about being spooky no 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 i'm not talking about being strange uh, i'm talking about uh, an experience uh, if we are going to experience uh, the operation of the holy ghost uh, then we've got to live uh, and walk in the spirit uh, in other words uh, the environment uh, of the glory of god uh, has to become more important uh, it has to become more precious uh, than this fleshy natural environment we've got to find ourselves uh, in the environment of god uh, and on this pentecost sunday uh, our prayer to god uh, our prayer Prayer to the Holy Spirit is carry me in the Spirit. Carry me in the Spirit, God. Uh, healing and deliverance, miracles, uh, signs and wonders uh, are all produced uh, in the environment of the Spirit. Uh, the environment of the Spirit is critical and necessary. You see, the environment of the Spirit gives us access. 
access to the kingdom realm. Oh, you got to stay with me today because I'm going to drop some stuff on you. The environment of the spirit gives us access to the kingdom realm. I want you to catch this. All supernatural activity of the spirit of God belongs to the kingdom of God. All spiritual activity takes place in the spirit in the environment of the kingdom of God. What are you saying, Pastor Brown? Well, Jesus revealed to us that overcoming the power of the devil or having power to destroy the works of the devil or having power to cast out devils was a direct result of the presence of the kingdom of God. In Matthew chapter 12, Jesus speaks to the Pharisees and he says but if I cast out devils by the spirit of God then the kingdom of God has come unto you and so I want you to learn this if you're writing I want you to write this down the kingdom is the principle the spirit of God is the power I want to talk to you today about principle and power I'm gonna say it again the kingdom is principle now the spirit is power and we may have the principle what are you saying pastor brown we may have the 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 talk about the kingdom and we may sing about the kingdom and we may preach and teach uh, about the kingdom but principle is not enough uh, principle won't heal the sick. Talking doesn't heal the sick. Principle teaching won't deliver the bound and the oppressed. And principle won't set the captives free. Principle is important. Yeah, principle is the foundation on which we stand. Principle establishes and stabilizes us and holds us in the right place. Principle is truth. Yeah, it is truth. But just knowledge of truth is never enough. I've told you before, it's not the truth that you know that sets you free. It's the truth that you activate. What am I saying to you? You can know all the truth about healing, but live every day of your life in sickness. You can know the truth about salvation and still end up in a devil's hell. It's not what you know, it's what you activate. And the kingdom of God, the realm of God is both principle and power. Somebody say power power. Paul tells the Corinthians uh, that the kingdom of God is not in word uh, but in power. He goes on to tell the Thessalonians uh, for our gospel came not unto you uh, in word only. No, not in principle or just in word uh, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost. Uh, look at Jude. Jude verse 3. Uh, Jude says, uh, beloved when I gave all diligence to write unto you uh, of the common salvation. It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was first delivered unto the saints. You know what? Jude knew prophetically that there was going to come a time when the body of Christ would slip into a state of complacency that it would begin to settle in a powerless faith a faith without substance my God a faith that consisted only of words and ideas and of philosophies a dead faith, uh, a dead faith that agrees with the Bible, uh, a dead faith that agrees uh, that Jesus is true, uh, but never presses its way uh, into a real experience uh, of his power and of his glory. Hallelujah. You got to activate, you got to activate what you know, uh, and you can only activate what you know uh, in the God realm. Uh, you can only activate what you know. You can only see a manifestation of what is written in the God realm and Ezekiel said that I was carried in the spirit and that's my prayer 
today, God, carry the church, uh, carry the preachers, uh, carry the worship leaders, uh, carry the prayer team, uh, carry every believer in the spirit. Uh, I want you to understand that everything the Bible says is ours, uh, is ours by right of inheritance. Uh, everything we have, uh, we have inherited it. Uh, we are seated together in heavenly places uh, with Christ Jesus. We have uh, an inheritance. Uh, but I want you to understand that even though you uh, hold the title deed uh, for a property, you will never benefit from it uh, until you press your claim and take possession of it yeah 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 it's, you gotta have more than just what's written you gotta have more than just what is principle you gotta have more than just teaching there's got to be a power that backs up because the kingdom of god is both principle and power and so being carried in the spirit, uh, being in the God environment, uh, having the power and the principle is the inheritance of every believer, but it comes only through the Holy Spirit. Uh, that's why we need uh, a Pentecostal experience. Uh, that's why Paul exhorts uh, uh, the Ephesian church uh, in Ephesians chapter 5 uh, and he tells them, do not be drunken with wine, uh, which is an excess, uh, but be filled continuously every day. Uh, be filled uh, with the Spirit. Uh, that's what Pentecost Sunday uh, is all about. The gifts of the Spirit. Signs, uh, miracles, wonders, healing, uh, deliverance, visions, dreams, uh, supernatural visitations uh, and manifestations, demonstrations uh, of the power of God, uh, the activity of God uh, in us and through us. That's what it means uh, to be Pentecostal. Uh, it's more than just Yabba yabba do. Uh, it's more than just running around the church uh, or rolling at the altar. It's activating uh, the mind of God in the realm of God. Uh, but you know what? The majority of the church world is satisfied with just the principle. Mm -hmm. We're high off of preaching. We're high up for teaching. You're watching me today. Uh, and as soon as you get through watching this, uh, you're going to watch about five other services. Uh, that's what this pandemic has done for the believer. We go church all day on a Sunday. We have a buffet of preachers. And we are high off of principle. We're high off of teaching. And we're just happy to know that it's there. And that the Bible is true. And that all of these promises belongs to us. But we never activate them. Because to activate them, you got to get out of the flesh. You got to get out of the carnal mindset. And you got to get into the spirit. Glory be to God. I want you to look at Judah. Judah. June warned us, uh, Jude warned us not to accept uh, a powerless message, uh, not to be deceived. Uh, but Jude says that we must earnestly contend, uh, we must fight uh, for the original faith uh, that the early church had. That's the faith I want. Uh, I want the faith of Paul uh, and Silas. Uh, I want to see the faith uh, of Peter, uh, the early church faith, uh, a vital living faith uh, that produced the miraculous, uh, that produced signs uh, and wonders, healing uh, and deliverance. Mm. And so, for me, my theology around Pentecost, when I classify, if I classify myself as Pentecostal, it's more than just speaking in tongues because, uh, listen, I've encountered some believers uh, that speak in tongues but can't speak the truth. Just, uh, just, 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 let, me, let me just leave that right there. It's more than just a shake. Being Pentecostal is more than just a twitch. It's more than just a wheel. It's more than just a dance. It's about being carried in the spirit to the God environment. 
And that's what it means uh, to have a Pentecostal experience. It means to get out of your flesh, uh, to get out of the carnal mind, uh, and to be carried uh, into the environment uh, where we can manifest uh, and demonstrate the love, uh, the power and the purposes of God. I'm getting excited. Maybe it's because I got an audience today. Glory to God. Let me tell you, anything short of a manifestation of the love, the power, and the purposes of God is a profession and not a possession. And we got a lot of professors, but we got very few possessors. Now, I just don't want to talk about you know, we got some people that just talk about, you got people that just look like, we, we look like uh, we're Christians, we look like uh, we're powerful, but we never activate the power of God. Uh, Jesus said uh, when he cast out devils, uh, it was principle and power. It was word and power. Paul said uh, the kingdom is not word only, uh, but principle must produce power or it's dead or it's useless and so in other words uh, if I have the kingdom principle but I don't have the kingdom power then all I have is words what do you have today on this Pentecost Sunday do you have more than words are you being carried daily by the spirit uh, I want you to understand that wherever the kingdom of God uh, is truly present uh, there is a manifestation of power anywhere the kingdom of God uh, has really arrived uh, there will be a manifestation uh, and a demonstration uh, of the power of God and so uh, what am I saying I'm saying uh, that the kingdom produces uh, what it speaks about look at Romans 14 uh, Paul tells the Romans Roman church uh, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink uh, but righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Ghost uh, and so wherever the kingdom of God uh, is present uh, there will be righteousness uh, there will be peace uh, and there will be joy uh, in the Holy Ghost uh, I I I'm gonna tie it all together uh, and so Ezekiel uh, he says uh, that he was carried uh, by the Spirit uh, into the kingdom realm. Yeah, uh, Ezekiel says, uh, the Spirit uh, set me down, catch this, uh, in the midst of a valley full of bones. He says that the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me by the Spirit and set me down into the midst, catch this, the midst of a valley full of bones. The Spirit of God took me to a place where there were bones. Bones signified, I mean, I mean those people have been dead for a long time. If all you're seeing is bones, that means they've been dead a long time. The Spirit Put me right in the midst of things that had been dead for years. Glory be to God. I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so here we see in this verse, what we're seeing is the power and the purpose of being carried by the Spirit. Mm. I've told you already, the power and the purpose uh, of being carried by the Spirit is not for an emotional outburst. It, it's more than just a jump. No, no, no. In, in this verse, we see uh, where, when Ezekiel says that he carried me and set me down in the midst of a valley full of bones. Uh, uh, I want you to know that the Spirit uh, will set, establish, and plant you uh, in chaotic environments uh, in order for you to manifest the kingdom. Yeah, he will place you uh, in environments where it seems like all hope is gone. Uh, he'll place you in environments where there is nothing uh, that will bring life, but it is for you. Uh, and your assignment uh, is to manifest 
the kingdom of God, the environment of God. I want you to understand that the kingdom of God is greater. The kingdom of God in you is greater than all of the sickness, all of the oppression, all of the disease, all of the bondage that surrounds us on a daily basis. We're walking around with the kingdom of God within us. We're walking around dead things and instead of becoming like them, we should be influencing them. We should be manifesting the glory of God Mm. Ezekiel says in verse 7 he says he's in the midst of a valley full of bones and he says so I prophesied as I was commanded verse 7 says and as I prophesied Catch this. There was a noise and and suddenly a rattling uh, and bones came together. The right bone was connected to the... uh, Y'all know that? Y'all don't know that song. Okay, I'll I'll leave it alone. Okay, pastor. Get back to my preaching. (laughs) He he says, uh, the bones came together, bone to bone. uh, And he says, indeed, as I looked, the sinews uh, and the flesh came upon them. As he declared the word, as he spoke the word, uh, our bones came together. There was noise, there was shaking, there was movement. Uh, bones came together. Sinews came over the Muscles came about. Uh, and then flesh uh, covered them. Uh, but hear what he says at the end of that verse. But there was no ruach. There was no breath. There was no spirit. They had word. They had principle, but what they were waiting for was the power. Notice Ezekiel says, I prophesied. That means he spoke principle, word. Uh Uh, Good things happen when we preach. Yeah, good things happen uh, when we teach. Uh, Our bones come together. Things got shook up uh, and there was some noise and sinews uh, and flesh came upon them and covered them uh, and they looked like human beings. They they looked alive, uh, but there was no breath. They just looked like, I don't know about you, but I'm tired of looking like. I'm tired uh, of coming to church and hearing great words, uh, but leaving looking like. The Bible says that they looked like they, they were covered with flesh. They didn't look like they were diseased. They didn't look like they were broke. Uh, didn't look like they were addicted. Uh, didn't look like they were going through problems. Uh, But there was no breath. Uh, In other words, principle or truth uh, and knowledge, it did some good stuff. Uh, Principle and knowledge will give you some good stuff. Uh, It will educate you. Uh, It will shake you up. Uh, It will seemingly put you together. Uh, It will make them look good. But no breath. They were still dead. Uh, uh, Pretty, but dead. (laughs) All put together but dead yeah yeah smelling good but dead have on a suit and a tire but dead singing in the choir but you're dead you're paying your tithes but dead let me say it another way you might be principled but you're dead you might be biblical but you're dead you might be knowledgeable but you're dead dead and I want you to know that the enemy that you fight uh, is not afraid of pretty bones he's not afraid of what you look like oh glory be to God Uh, he's not afraid of what you talk about in principle what makes him shake uh, what makes him tremble is when you back that word uh, with the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, glory be to God. Uh, your enemy does not care how many scriptures you can quote. Uh, your enemy does not care how indoctrinated you are. Your enemy does not care uh, about how dressed up and how Christian uh, you can look. None of that bothers him. Why? Because dead is still dead dead is still dead and that's what we're dealing with uh, we're dealing with people that have received principle and received word uh, but no power and today I want to challenge you today uh, I want to provoke you uh, to stretch your hands uh, and to cry out God carry me uh, in the spirit 
Uh -huh. Because what I've learned uh, is that you can have the biggest church uh, and still be dead. Uh, you can have the best praise uh, and worship uh, and still be dead. Uh, you can have the most eloquent preacher in town uh, and still be dead. Uh, you can have all the doctrines of the church memorized and still be dead. Uh, because if all we have is principle then we're dead <laughs> listen if I teach on the gifts of the spirit uh, but we never have a manifestation uh, of those gifts uh, then we are dead uh, if I teach uh, on divine healing uh, and nobody ever gets healed uh, then we are dead uh, if I teach and talk about the Holy Ghost uh, but nobody gets filled uh, nobody gets baptized uh, nobody gets delivered uh, then we are dead dead uh, glory be to God uh, Jesus says uh, in Luke chapter 5 uh, it declares that Jesus came uh, on a certain day and as he was teaching uh, there were Pharisees uh, and doctors of the law that were sitting around him uh, which came out of every town uh, from Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem uh, and listen what it says and the power of the Lord was present to heal them he was teaching, he was giving principle, but the word of God says the power of the Lord was present. I'm a preacher, I'm not against preaching. I love me some good preaching, but preaching that is effective, preaching that changes lives must be backed up by the power of God must be backed up by the Spirit of God. That's what Pentecost is all about. Listen, in the Valley of Dry Bones, there was principle, and, and principle had done some good stuff because the bones came together. Principle had, had shifted some stuff and shook up some stuff. Uh, and yeah, that's what preaching does. It shakes up some stuff uh, in your life. It helps you to get your credit back on track. Uh, helps you to deal uh, with your marriage better, with your children better, with your life better. My God, uh, principle had done some good stuff, but there was still no life. There was still no breath. Uh, Ezekiel, you're not finished. Ezekiel, you're not finished. Uh, the job is only half done. Uh, Ezekiel, uh, if these bones don't experience the power of God, then you've only given them half the message. And across the world, from our pulpits, uh, we're only giving half the message. We're only indoctrinating you uh, and giving you words and revelations upon revelations. Uh, but unless you experience, my God, uh, unless you experience the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, I'm not talking about an emotional experience. Uh, I'm talking about the power that transforms your life. Uh, the power that brings you back to life. Uh, then you've only received half. Of the message. I'm nearly through. I promise you. Mm. Ezekiel 37 verse 9. Look at this. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Then he said unto me. Because the job is only half done. There's shaking in the valley. And bones have come together. I want you to use your imagination. And so they're, they're there. And they, they look alive. There's flesh on them again. But there's no breath. Uh -huh. And then he said unto me. Prophesy. Principle. Speak. Prophesy means to foretell and to foretell. To be prophetic means to declare. He says, declare, son of man, prophesy. Speak to the wind, my God. Oh, hallelujah. Speak to the ruach. Speak to the breath. Somebody speak to the Holy Ghost. Call on the wind. Prophesy, son of man. And say to the wind, thus says the Lord God, come, come Holy Spirit, come wind of God, come from the four, the four winds, oh breath, and breathe upon these slain, 
that they may live. Uh, that's where we're at today. Uh, we are at a place uh, where we need to lift our hands and I challenge you uh, right where you are. If you're in this church uh, or you're watching online, uh, I want you to lift your hands uh, and I want you to say, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Tells Ezekiel to speak to the Spirit. Speak to the wind. Speak to the Ruach. Speak to the breath. Prophesy. Prophesy. You've given the principle, my God. You've taught the word. You've spoken to the bones. Now you got to speak to the Spirit. Hmm. Come, Holy Spirit. That's what we need. That's our prayer today. And that's my prayer today. I want you to lift your hands. In fact, I want you to stretch your hands right where you are. I want you to say, come, Holy Spirit. Come on, everybody that's watching. Everybody that's in this room today. I want you to lift your hands on this Pentecost Sunday. And I want you to say, come, Holy Spirit. Come, heal the sick. Deliver the bound and the oppressed. Come, come. Holy Spirit, come into my home, come into my marriage, come into my family, set the captives free, deliver mighty God, come Holy Spirit, destroy every bondage, break every bondage, break every yoke, come Holy Spirit, break every chain, cause the lame to walk, cause the blind to see, come Holy Spirit. Oh, Come, Holy Spirit. Come, we need another Pentecostal experience. We prophesy to the Ruach. We speak to the wind. We speak and we say breath of God. Breath of God, carry us in the spirit. Carry us out of this natural realm. Carry us out of our sin. Carry us out of our folly. Carry us out of carnality. Bring us into the environment of God. Bring us into the God dimension. Bring us into the realm of the kingdom. This is our prayer on this Pentecostal Sunday. Hallelujah. I'm closing. Verse 10 says, So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them. You see, when you speak to the spirit, the spirit will respond. Yes. Ezekiel says, I prophesied. I prophesied as I was commanded. And the breath came into them. And they lived. And they stood up on their feet as an exceedingly great army. When the wind comes, the army rises. When the Holy Ghost comes, we get ready to tear down every place. And, uh, and every strategy uh, of the enemy when the Holy Ghost uh, really comes uh, I'm not talking about a shout uh, I'm talking about the real Spirit of God uh, when he really fills your life uh, he empowers you to war for the kingdom of God uh, and the Bible says in Acts chapter 1 uh, and verse 8 uh, for ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost uh, has come upon you uh, and you shall be my witnesses uh, you can't talk about Jesus accurately without the power of the Holy Ghost uh, and then we go into Acts chapter 2 uh, and verse 1 to 4 uh, and it says and when the day uh, of Pentecost was fully come. They were all with one accord in one place and suddenly just like in the valley suddenly there was a sound and a noise and a shaking and a rattling a sound of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting and then there appeared a Clothing her, uh, separate tongues of fire that sat uh, upon each one of them, and they were all filled. Not some of them, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues uh, as the Spirit uh, gave utterance. I'm through today. But I want you to know that principle and knowledge can sit on a shelf and gather dust. But power is action. Power changes. Power heals. 
Power delivers. Power makes us dangerous to the kingdom of hell. Amen. Yeah. What am I saying on this Pentecostal Sunday? There had to be more to Ezekiel's message than words. Preacher, worship leader, minister, believer. There has to be more to your message than just words, my God. There had to be breath. There had to be ruach. There had to be spirit. There had to be wind. There had to be power. You've been experiencing the principle for so long. Sunday after Sunday, you've been experiencing the principle, the kingdom, the teaching, the preaching. Now it's time for the power. Challenge you today. It's time for the power. I'm not downplaying the principle. I'm not downplaying preaching or, or teaching it's principle it's not a theory it's not a suggestion it's factual it's principle it's foundational it's what we stand on but we also need we need the power carried in the spirit I prophesy to you today to you that are in this house and you that are watching online I prophesy I declare to you today that the wind of the Spirit is about to blow in your life. Somebody lift your hands. The wind of the Spirit is about to blow. It's about to fill. It's about to flood your life. And it can happen right now. It can happen right where you are. You might be in your living room. You might be in your bed. It can happen right now. I want you in this moment, on this Pentecost Sunday, I want you to lift your hands in the presence of the Lord. I want you to call on the wind. I want you to speak to the Ruach, the breath of God, the Spirit of God. I want you to lift your hands and say, God, carry me in the spirit uh, like you did with Ezekiel uh, carry me in the spirit uh, lift me out uh, of this natural fleshly realm uh, and take me into the God environment uh, that's what I need I know the word uh, I've heard the word uh, I'm fat on the word uh, I have the principle uh, I lift my hands uh, and I say Holy Ghost uh, fill me with power Rosan Oshaya Fill me with power. Fill me with power. Carry me in the spirit. Carry me in the spirit. And anywhere you take me, God, that's where I'll minister. If you carry me into a midst of dry bones, I'll declare your word. I'll declare your power. Father, carry us in the spirit. On this Pentecost Sunday, this is our prayer today, God that you carry us in the spirit. We ask for a Pentecostal experience, a true Pentecostal experience. One that fills us with power to serve your cause. For you have said that after the Holy Ghost has come upon us, then we shall be witnesses. We can't witness without the power of the Holy Ghost. Father, I pray today that the Holy Ghost would rest, remain, and abide upon every hearer. Father, I pray for those that may not be walking in relationship with you right now as they watch this, as they listen to this. I pray for conviction. I pray for a stirring. I pray for a rattling. I pray that bones would come together. Almighty God, and then I speak to the wind that you would blow into their heart and fill them with new life. Save and deliver today. God, this is our earnest prayer that we pray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to thank you for joining us on this Pentecost Sunday. And if you've been watching this sermon, listening, and you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, you need to be carried out of that realm that you're in into a realm where you can really experience the power of God and 
becoming a born again believer is so simple it's as simple as acknowledging Jesus Christ as Lord acknowledging that he died for your sins acknowledging that he was crucified because of your sins he was buried to carry your sins away and that he was resurrected with victory for your life and your future and if you believe and you receive that today say amen, amen. and if that is your testimony we want to hear from you if you have committed to that prayer and you want to become a born-again believer, we want to hear from you. Just send us a message. Message, Tell us that, hey, I, I prayed this prayer. I want to know more about Jesus. I want to more, know more about Christianity. I want to know more about the Holy Spirit. We got people that are ready to pray with you, ready to counsel you, ready to teach you, ready to, to worship the living God with you. God bless you today. I, 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 I almost forgot. Today is not just Pentecost Sunday. But we got some folk, we got two people that are ready to be baptized in water. Amen. And I just believe uh, that as they are baptized in the name of the Lord, uh, that the power and the presence of God is going to saturate their life. And so I want you to come with me as we get ready to go into the waters uh, of baptism. We're going to baptize uh, Shola Lampkin today and Takia uh, uh, Cupid. I can't even remember her. Prentice Cupid. <laughs> Takia Prentice Cupid is going to go into the waters of baptism. I got two beautiful sisters uh, that are going to go through obedience and, and, and get into the waters of baptism and, and firm and, and, and acknowledge their allegiance to Jesus Christ. And I'm glad that you're here to watch it. So stay with me. Hi there, my name is Shola Lampkin and um, I've decided to give myself to the Lord because it's time. You know, in January I did the Daniel Fast, which I do every single year, but this year was a little bit different. I took it a little bit more serious and I really marinated in the Word of um, God. Um, you know, I came off social media and really spent time um, just kind of you know, uh, focusing on what I need to focus on and coming out of the fast I have seen so many different things happen in my life, so many different things, so many different changes, and I just realized, you know what, it's time. It's time. I've been doing things my way, and now it's time to do it his way. So I'm very, very thrilled to be here today getting baptized. Amen. Hey everyone, praise the Lord. My name is Takia, friend is Cupid. And um, I'm rededicating my life today to Christ just because he told me to come, so I obeyed. And um, he's been working in my life for some time. I have came off of a fast as well. I was a seven day one. And um, really a lot of transformation has come and happened in my life. And I'm excited for the next seasons of life that he has prepared because I know it's going to be awesome. I know he's called me to reach people that many probably wouldn't reach. And I'm dedicated to do the work. Hallelujah. Praise God. Shola. Pastor. <laughs> so good to have you here today. Great to be here. Hallelujah. You've been a blessing to our church and to our ministry and I'm so honored to be able to baptize you today. I just have one question for you. And the water's warm. You can tell them that the water's warm, it's right? It's nice and warm. Nice and warm. Have you made Jesus Christ your only Lord and your only Savior? Yes, I have. Then, upon the confession of your faith in Jesus Christ, I now baptize you unto God, who is your Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah! Oh, yeah. 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 Angels are rejoicing! Yeah. 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 Today we have Takia. Hallelujah, Takia. It's so good and it's an honor of mine to be able to baptize you to, as a sign of your recommitment to Jesus Christ. I have only one question for you. Have you made Jesus Christ your only Lord and your only Savior? I have. Well, there you have it, folks. So, upon the confession of your faith in Jesus Christ, 
I now baptize you unto God who is your Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. How was that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. If you're watching and you've made a commitment to Jesus Christ and you want to be baptized, let us know and we will baptize you in the name of the Lord. God bless you today. Amen. Amen. Amen.